post if I will not open the door. So while you paying your tithes, he said, bet. Since you pay your tithes and you give me money, you trust me with this area, I will open up the windows of heaven over you and overflow will come. Blessings will come, right? Blessings will come. I will give you what you are deserving of because you've given me mine. So it's like, and he said that there should not be, there should not be enough room to receive it. Like it'll be overflow. So give God his and watch what he do in your life, man. We're going to go back to number three, Okay. Obsess over this goal every single dang day and let it consume your life. This, we are not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not obsessing over anything but the blood of Jesus, the love of Christ, okay? So what I put is declare and decree over this and plead the blood daily. The Bible says 365 times. It's a reminder for every day. Do not fear. What do you have to fear? If God is for you, who can be against you? If God right here, Jesus right here, Holy Spirit is in here. What am I afraid of? Nothing. I'm not walking around in fear. I'm not going to walk around like Satan. Satan walks around in fear because he's scared. Because he got to fight God. And he going to lose. <laughs> What's good, guys? Welcome back to Amber and the Truth Podcast. What I do. My name is here and what I do. My name is here and what I do. My name is Amber. And what I do here is expose the truth, the gospel truth that is. And today another podcast episode for you guys i'm in a different setting i'm not sitting down right now i'm here at my desk one of my desks and um um i just i wanted to have this certain conversation with you guys about money about business about planning about going after what you feel god has called you to do um the reason why i'm speaking on this is because this is me i'm speaking to me i'm speaking about me And, um, I just wanted to talk about it because, um, is this, is this, this is, this is where I'm most vulnerable is the podcast. I really love the podcast. Podcast is my baby. Um, and, um, to be honest, I wanted to let you guys know a little bit into what's going on with me. So I'm launching a business, bro. Um, well, the thing is, I've always seen myself as someone who didn't work for other people. Just always, since I was in high school, since as long as I remember about getting a job, I was like, this this working for other people just wasn't for me. I know it's never been for me. And even though I'm currently working for somebody right now, I'm employed by somebody, that's not the end of my journey, my destination. I know for a full fact that I'm called to work for myself. And I don't just work for, like, not even just work for myself, that I, I have my own ministry. Me and my husband have our own ministry. And we're called to do what God called us to do. But at the same time, it needs to be funded, right? So we're going to have these little business ventures that's going to keep our life afloat until Jesus come crack that sky and take us home. So um, lately, that's what I've been kind of focusing on. Um, for the most part, just trying to, to compartmentalize and make sure that I'm sticking one foot into every single thing that I do and doing it consistently with discipline because. I can't be out here um, being, I can't pray for God to elevate my life and my finances and don't do nothing on my head. Don't do nothing on my end. We do that a lot. We pray for God to do a bunch of stuff and then don't do nothing. Just sit and wait. I'm supposed to be still. Is that what he said? We're supposed to be actively hearing his voice and what he said, you know? So um, as of lately, I've been asking him to provide me, not to provide, to tell me what he wants me to do for my day. And it's been really enlightening hearing from God and him telling you what he wants you to do. Even though you want to do certain things you want to do, it'd be the opposite of what he wants me to do. He'd be like, okay, I want you to do these three things and that's it. Okay, Lord, but I want to do four, five, six, seven. He's like, no, one, two, three is what I said. <laughs> so um, God gave me a dream a few months ago about starting a, uh, a drop shipping e-commerce store. And it wasn't even, I don't even think it was dropshipping. I think it was just like me having a business in the dream. I wish I would have wrote it down. I should have been obedient and wrote it down because I wasn't writing down all of my dreams, but I didn't. So um, I thought it was too small to write down. I thought it was too simple to write down, so I didn't. So anyway, um, a couple of years ago, I was going to start one. Um, what is it? Yeah, I was going to start one. And... um. What's crazy is that um, 
um, I was, yeah, I was going to start one. And, um, that was when I was, I just watched a vlog too. And I was like, I was still smoking. I was still, um, I wasn't even like, I was, I was quote unquote following God, but he was still ripping the world off of me. He was still getting the world off of me. I could clearly see in that video that I watched of myself, like God wasn't, he wasn't finished with me yet, or he hadn't got deep enough yet to where I'm at this point. So I was going to start it, but I was going to start it for money. And I was going to start it because, okay, I wanted to do what I wanted to do with the money and what I wanted to do with um my life at the time. And it wasn't God led at all. So I never did start it thankfully. Um, I just, I just didn't feel like it was time for me to start it. Cause I was going to do that drop shipping. And then after that, I was going to start my ATM business. I had a couple grand in the bank and from taxes and stuff like that in school. And I was like, okay, let me start this, this ATM, ATM business. I even, I, I did all the work. I got the business. I got the tax number. I got the EIN number. I got the I, number. Yeah. EIN number, business name. I got everything. I got the LLC. I didn't do anything with it. I just didn't feel led to it. It was just like, I didn't, I was scared. It was fear. It was a lot going on. And I was just like, nah, I can't do it. So, um, so what I did was, um, nothing. So after I had that dream, I prayed to God. I, I, I sought his face for, okay, Lord, is was that just Satan playing with me? you know, trying to get me to start something you, he don't want, you don't want me to do, or did you give me that dream to start it? Because I've been praying for financial stability for over two years now. I've been praying for God to bless my finances for years now, because I'm tired of making the same, I've been making the same amount of money since I was in LA. Nothing has changed. I've made the same, I don't care how much money, it was just so weird because I don't care how much um, uh, minimum wage goes up how many hours I work, it is the same amount of money in my check for the past five, six, seven years. And that's so weird. I'm asking God, I'd be like, why am I still making the same amount of money? Like, what's up? I'm not called to be broke, disgusted, broke, busted and disgusted. Like, that's not what you have. That's not my portion at all. And, um, there was, there was a spirit of poverty had to be broken off of my bloodline and broken off of me really. And um, I remember going to a Deborah's Horizon. If you don't know what that is, Deborah's Horizon is a monthly woman's conference that my church has, that my pastor, Prophet, Prophet Charlita, oof, sorry, y'all, Prophet Charlita Bear, you can look her up on Facebook and Instagram. Um, she has She has this monthly women's conference. It's not just for women, but it started with women. And we had the conference. It was a three day conference and everybody came from all over and she had a bunch of speakers and, um, the one of the particular speakers broke off the spirit of poverty, broke it off the entire, whoever's in that building, it got it broke off of them. And I remember feeling the physical change of that spirit being gone because it was, it's so like my life has just hit a plateau with money with finances and I got tired of it. And I'm just like, Lord, you got to do what you got to do because I can't excel. I can't be great at this tax bracket or at this amount of money in my account. So when that moment before I started speaking different because the thing is sometimes we bring these curses over us, but by the way we talk, Oh, I'm broke. I ain't got it right now. Or da, da, da. What I, what I, I stopped saying I'm broke. I started saying, I, if I don't have it, I'll say, I don't have it right now. But what I, what I do say is my millions ain't came yet. My riches ain't came yet. And I started saying that because it's true. My millions and my riches has not come yet because um, I'm not called to be poor. I'm just not, you know. Um, and some people are meant to just live and get by. Some people are, you know, meant to be super rich and some people to be well off and in the middle. I'm not, I'm, I don't know what God got me at financially where he wants me to go, but I know where I'm at is not where I'm staying. That's period. I'm not. And, um, I wanted to, I'm, I'm going to start on my TikTok. I have two TikToks. I'm going to put it in the description below. Um, the ministry TikTok is usually just, you know, posts of this and reactions and, you know, um, from TikTok and reactions from my YouTube videos. But I have another one where it's lifestyle is basically for the vlog. And I will be 
posting on that one, keeping you guys updated on all the changes and everything that I'm doing in my life. And um, so if you want to know any specific details of what dropshipping is and how it is and what it looks like and and how to make money and all of that, I will be posting all of that in that TikTok. And I won't be posting things that I know. I'll be posting real stuff, real life stuff that's going on with me because I want to follow and document the glory that God's going to get from this. I'm not starting this business because I'm money hungry. I'm starting this business because um, I've been praying for financial stability and I believe God is going to give me this as my breakthrough. Okay, remember remember what I said breakthrough was? If you, ain't, if you go back and listen to a, pod, a bunch of podcasts ago, a breakthrough is when your suffering meets the glory of God and it and, and it glorifies him. I forgot what I said it was. <laughs> Not, I'm trying to ask y'all. I remember I forgot. But basically, I'm trying to meet my breakthrough financial breakthrough soon by the end of this year by december 31st of 2024 even though we're still in january this year would be my greatest financial year yet and i mean buku money i mean ducats i mean skrilla you know what i'm saying and and i believe that because number one money's not my motivator it has never been my motivator i've never gotten up because i needed to make some money i got up because i needed food clothes shelter electricity that is the reason why I got up. I know a lot of people would be like, get to the bag and money's everything. And I'm just like, money's not. like. And um, yeah, like money's not everything to me. It has never been everything. I know we need it to get things, to have access to things. But as far as like doing everything for it or doing anything for it, I just will not. If, you know what I'm saying? And God taught me my biggest lesson in 2021 about... um him being a him him being my provider because that was a year he told me not to work and i was so uncomfortable because i've only i've been working since i was 16 years old what do you mean don't work lord and he told me not to work and he had provided that entire year i ain't went without nothing that year that i needed he provided so i thank the lord for that and and taught me how to manage money without even having any legit he provided for me but every single time i got the money it was for something I didn't just, just have it sitting in my bank. So um, after that, God began to instill in me um, smart things to do with my money. Number one, tithe first before I pay a bill, before I buy anything. Um, tithe first. Pay my tithes. And um, I've been doing that. And my money's been stretching. Because usually I used to have more money than I had month. <laughs> and... um. I mean, more month that I have money, and now it's stretching, and now it's it's going longer than I thought it ever would. So I started doing that, and on top of that, when I got a lump sum of money, like when I was in school, I wouldn't just go out and spend it all. Um, I would think before I bought it. If I'm in the store and I want to buy something, and it's my last, then I'm not buying it. If I can't buy it twice, I can't afford it, and I, you know, I started living by that rule, like. If I can't buy it two times or if I buy it and I'm going to be broke at the end of it, no, it's not worth it. So um, not broke, but be out of the amount of money I would like. I'm telling you to rephrase how you talk. Um, then I'm not buying it. So God was teaching me all of these things. He was um, He was telling me to get, he told me, like I know a lot of people, rich people tell you to get five credit cards. I got five debit cards. <laughs> and the reason why I got five debit cards is because I'm not on my credit tip just yet like if you want to follow me on my finance journey job shipping journey my hair journey my weight loss journey all of that would be on the tiktok in the description below but um yeah so like i bought i got five debit cards and i have a actual real bank but y'all know that real banks take forever for ever to take your money out of the account when you spend it so what god taught me was to um I have a credit builder. I don't have a credit card yet, but I have a credit builder. And I was using that credit builder to not only build my credit and to make, you know, to build points and stuff like that, but to also to add, um, um, to pay my bills with all of my money for my bills went onto that card. And I've been doing it for over a year and I didn't even know that was, I completely forgot that was affecting my credit. And I, when I looked at my credit, I was like, Oh snap. And, um, so I'd been doing that for years. And I got me like five debit cards. I got me the Chime account. I got me Venmo. I got me um, two Cash App accounts. I have two phones. 
So one cash app for another phone, the other cash app for another phone. Um, I got a, actually I got more than five. I got a PayPal debit card. I got a credit karma debit card. And I got like this provider debit card. Like if you got food stamps, they got their own little debit card. So I got that. I got eight debit cards. Okay. And when I have enough money, I spread it money on each card so that way all my money isn't sitting in one place and I get to spend it differently and I and sometimes I forget I even have it on some cards and I'm surprised I got extra thirty dollars you know stuff like that and I think that's just practice for what I'll be doing with my credit cards to be honest because I know having multiple credit cards is really great for your credit but anyway um so um yeah that's what I started doing with my money so I'm not in the negative ever I'm not guessing how much money I have because all those type of cards take the money immediately and they tell you how much you have left over. Take my advice and do that. If you have a certain amount of money and you want to and, and you want to spend, put that money on Cash App. Put that money on Chime. Put that money anywhere except your bank because your bank will not tell you all the transactions you make. You think you got $300 and next thing you know, you negative 200 like what? That used to happen to me so much when I lived in LA because I didn't understand it. Even when I kept track down to a T, it still happened. I was like, bro. So, um, yeah, so, yeah, so, um, I used to do that a lot and I, and God taught me how to stop, how to stop really when I had no job, all I had was the chime to put money on. And then I got a real bank account. I got me a credit union when I started my job and I've been using that ever since. And, um, yeah, so, um, that's, that's it when it comes to, to the, to money part. So, um, what I want to talk about is a few things that I've been learning and I've been implementing in my life as far as getting my life together financially. Cause after the, the debit card thing, um, I bought a car. If you don't know, now you know. Follow the vlog. If you follow my vlog channel, Amber's Diaries, you will see everything that's going on in my life. Um, but yeah, I bought a car and I wanted to pay that car off with the financial aid I was I'm supposed to be getting, which I was supposed to have three weeks ago, but never mind that. When I was supposed to be getting, I was gonna I was gonna pay the car off. But then I felt God was telling me to build my credit, to pay on that car for a good a good amount. Build your credit and then pay it off. And I was like, mm, okay. So that's the plan. That's what I plan on doing. Um, yeah, that's what I plan on doing. So um, the plan is to um, pay it, to pay on it until I get my next round of financial aid for school, which is in August. Hopefully that one's not super late. And then pay it off in August. And then it's my car it's my own because i never i never i said i would never have a car payment i'm not big on car payments car payments just don't make no sense to me why am i paying you consistently to like drive a car that's so dumb to me it's just it doesn't make any sense and i just and i always felt like honestly it was a poverty mindset why i would never make car payments i was like because i needed the car to be mine if something happened and i had to live in my car the last thing i needed was a car payment but I had to jump out of that mindset. I had to, you know, because I was nervous about making car payments, not because I wasn't going to have the money, because I didn't want to. What if something happened? And then God was like, so you don't trust me? And I was like, <laughs> Father, you know I have faith. And he was like, yeah, but in this moment, you're not showing me that you are. You worried about what ifs, like I don't have you covered. Like I haven't met every single need that you've had. And I was like, you know what? Shut me up go ahead and do that <laughs> so that's what i do um and so on top of that i have a bill organizer and i'm sad to say that my bill organizer that i was using is about to go out of business bro it the app when i open the app it literally says the app is shutting down february 20th i was like what i've been using y'all for years so god pointed me to another one and it's called chronicle it's like a bill reminder and it tells you um, when your bills are due, it gives you a, like a notification, keeps track of how much your bills is for the month, um, how much you got left over, all that good stuff. Because I need, I need to know how much I'm making and enter in my paydays. Also enter in how much the bills is so I can have a medium. Like, okay, this is how much I got left. So that's the plan with that. 
And once I once um I start using that to keep track of my bills, so no one stuff is paid, no one stuff is coming up, so it's not a surprise to me. Um when I get paid, add all the money that I need to be on a specific bill to a certain card, so I'm not spending money that's not mine. And yeah, and God has been doing God has been teaching me really well with my money, just through these small little things. Um I haven't really been taught on finances in my life at all, really. I know my grandmother has amazing has amazing credit and good finances, but she just got there. Like it wasn't her whole life that she's been practicing that. But she also hasn't really taught me much. So I don't this is all coming from the Lord. This is all come I'm no cat, this is all coming from Jesus. He's literally teaching me how to be financially smart. And I you know, I know a few people that God has put in my life that's gonna help me elevate to a certain point. So for right now I'm just dealing with the basics with my little bit of change of that I make now. So with this business that I'm um be going into drop shipping, there's a plenty there's plenty of business ideas that I have that I'm gonna start, but drop shipping is going to fund all of them. So I have to make sure that one is squared away. I've been praying, been asking God for direction, how to move, when to move, show me the perfect video that's gonna teach me everything I could possibly know. And lo and behold, after that prayer, a week later, somebody dropped a 18 hour drop shipping course for free. I was like, that's crazy. God is so good. Like he's and the thing is the dude been working on it for months. So it just rightly aligned with what I was doing. And of course I watch drop shipping courses on YouTube and they're usually an hour or two longer. Some people have like maybe three, four hours, but his to be 18 hours, that means he extended it past anything anybody else has ever taught. And I could see the hard work he put into it. And um, the thing is, with him, he's of the world. He's not a Christian. So that means the things he taught about the mental aspect and the spiritual aspect doesn't align with me as a Christian. So what I did was made it align. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you. And thing is, I'm watching him. And because I'm, I'm mature enough in the spirit to separate, to see certain things, I can I can align it to God. He can align it to the universe, but what I'm going to do is align it to Jesus. In this house, we follow Jesus. So I wanted to go over some things that he is talking about when it comes to having a successful business. It starts it starts with um, the mind first. It starts spiritually. It starts with God first. If you're going to start anything, make sure that God is giving you the leeway. It is his guidance it is his decision it is something he given you if you're doing this without his permission it will not work it will not last because you are doing stuff outside of his will don't be surprised if it failed because you did something he did not tell you to do i sought after this i was like lord it's a desire of mine if it's a desire of mine you gave me a dream i want to do it and the desire grew and he gave me ideas that's how i know it was him so um Let's just jump into what this guy was talking about. So I'm going to show you right now. First, before I jump into what the guy was talking about, I wanted to give you guys, um, I wanted to give you guys, uh, what is it? Scriptures that my pastor told me to pray over my finances. Okay. And this is one of them. Philippians 419 but my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Understand that God will provide. He is the provider. Um, and there's nothing that you need that he will not meet, but there's certain things that we, we, we be one from God that um, we be one from God that that's just not part of his plan. we got to make sure these things, are in his will. We got to make sure that these things are, or he has called us to do. Like I said, don't find yourself, be mad if stuff don't work out, ain't nothing working out because he probably didn't tell you to do it. You know what I'm saying? So make sure you are in the perfect will of God. Okay. I've been praying about this for two years, two years, bro. And I'm just now getting an answer from God. Like, okay, go ahead. He had to learn me in specific areas. If he had told, if I started this drop shipping business or this ATM business back in 2019, in 2020, Bruh, the mis I probably would have not say I would have failed, but the mistakes I would have made that I could have avoided if I just saw God. Because even though I believed in God and I named my business after God, it it wasn't um 
it wasn't going to flourish because he wasn't in every single detail. Now he's in every detail. Like I go to him about the business name. What should I even sell? How much? Which seller? Like certain things. Boom, 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 boom. I'm not doing this by myself. Me and God are going into business together and he's guiding me. I'm hold, He's holding my hand as we walk. Okay. So write these down. This is Philippians 419. Okay. And you pray these scriptures over your finances. And you ask God to break that spirit of poverty. Okay. We're going to go to Malachi 310. Bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove that me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. I don't know why this is um, KJV. Maybe that's just naturally what it is. I'm just trying something new that's on this, um, that that's on this, um, this this platform I use to record this video, but regardless, you need help understanding it. Basically, bring all your tithes to the store out. So pay your tithes. I don't care about what they talking about tithes. Tithes back in the Bible days was 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 grains and wheat. We only supposed to be paying with food. Quit lying. Your tithes, the grain, wheat, and cows, and 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 sheep, and all of that was was the money. It was currency. Yes, they had coins, but when you was rich, that means you had a lot of you had a lot of uh, uh, land and you had a lot of stock. Today, it's bucks. Today is dollars. Today is money. Quit playing. Give God His money for you. Snatch it off, cause He can have it. It's His. All of it is His. Really, He just let you have the ninety percent. He like give me ten. We're going to be good. But sometimes we'd be stingy and we'd be greedy. And we'd be like, ooh, I want the rest. And you wonder why you run out of money. You wonder why you thought you had a certain amount that you didn't have. I remember not paying my tithes and then not having enough money to have everything paid for. You know what I'm saying? So it's like we got to give God his first. It's all of his. He allow us to have it. Who makes sure that your body work? You can get up and go to that job. Who makes sure you're in your right mind to keep the job? And then when you get paid, make sure that it's paid on time. Ain't no money issues going on with the bank or the job. He do it all. So give him his and quit complaining. Okay? And um, and then he said, prove me now here with saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the door. So while you paying your tithes, he said, bet. Since you pay your tithes and you give me mine and you trust me with this area, I will open up the windows of heaven over you and overflow will come. Blessings will come, right? Blessings will come. I will give you what you are deserving of because you've given me mine. So it's like, and he said that there should not be, there should not be enough room to receive it. Like it'll be overflow. So give God his and watch what he do in your life, man. You know, I'm just like, we be stingy. Like, you know, we, we, we really be, be stingy with God. Like, he won't take all of this, you know. So, write that one down, okay. These are the things that um I I ain't been perfect about praying over, you know what I'm saying. But, you know, I got I to, you know, I'm, I'm releasing some gems to y'all, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> Second Corinthians 8, 9. For ye know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ that he is, that through... That though he is rich, yet for your sakes he became poor, that ye through his poverty might be rich. Understand that Jesus was chilling on the throne. You know what I'm saying? He was in heaven kicking it. That's his dominion. Riches and glory is there. And he came to the earth and was poor. For us. <laughs> and then died and rose again. Went back into glory. So that way now we... Use his stripes as a ladder to get to glory, to glory, to riches. I'm not saying I want to be buku rich. I want to be a billionaire. I want all the money in the world. What I'm saying is that now we have access to things of heaven that we didn't have before because of the sin between us and God. Because the union was destroyed. Now it's restored. And now we can get access to things that we didn't have before. Okay. All right. So we're going to go to Luke 638. Um. This the hold on, y'all. Luke, I'm trying to find it. Okay, write these down, bro. Write these down. Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over, shall men give into your bosom. Or with the same measure that ye meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. So basically, give, and it shall be given to you. That's, that's pretty simple. Don't be out here just want to get, get, get all the time, being greedy. Ooh, this is for me. This is for me. When you are a servant of the Lord, 
The greatest among you is a servant. You want to be great at something? You have to be a servant. You have to always be of service. What can I do for you? How can I help? And not because you're going to get something, but because it's, because it's a heart posture. Okay? Your heart has to be aligned with God in order to do great things. And I know God's going to do amazing things in my life because I'm trying to make sure that my heart is always aligned with him. Okay? So this saying, given shall be given unto you, pressed down, shaken and together, running over. That means it's going to be, you're going to get a lot of it <laughs> if you are in constant service. You never know who you can run into, who you're doing things for. You know what I'm saying? So um, so I listened to, what's the podcast? I listened to um, 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 the More Purpose podcast. And it's a faith, it's a faith-based podcast about, you know, faith, of course, about Christian and the life of following Christ, but also about money and finances. And the story that one of the, the brothers told was that, he had um he had bought tickets to go to this 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 finance convention or something like that right and when he got there because he was um he had went there the previous year by himself because god told him to go and he had met this one guy who be end up becoming his mentor to teach him how to do stuff and so the second year he was told to come and he spent buku money to go he was like all right god i'll go again and when he went and he showed up he met the guy because the guy literally runs this entire conference is his you know what i'm saying so he met the guy and has been mentored by the guy who was running this whole finance content finance uh conference that the billionaires are showing up multi-millionaires are showing up to so he got put him in alignment with that so when he shows up the guy immediately asked him to get to work start serving and he said he took a step back not physically and spiritually he was like what i came here to you know to do something else but he put his pride aside and was like, forgive me, Lord, and begin to work and begin to be a service to people. Mm, what can I do? How can I help? And he did what he was supposed to do, not even knowing he was going to be meeting these amazing men and women who have this money, who are going to help him and talk him into having this, 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 this great financial lead in his life, right? So after that, he began to, 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 to walk closely with the man who's owning this conference, right? Who's running this conference and to be blessed by meeting all of these millionaires, all of these billionaires and stuff like that. I'm not saying that money is everything. What I'm saying is like, God will put you in the room where you need to be, where you're supposed to be when you are a servant, when you are in service, period. You will be where you need to be when you're following Christ. And if he would put his pride up, was like, nah, I'm not going to serve nothing. He wouldn't have got no gems. He wouldn't have been dropped. You know what I'm saying? He wouldn't have met all these people who can literally potentially help him build his own business, get into the lane he wants to be in. So it's like the same measure that you, the same effort and the same push and all the service that you give somebody, God's going to give it to you, period. You don't give nothing out in this world. And, 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 um, yeah, you don't give nothing out in this world. And, 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 um, for by God for God and then nothing returns. No. So we're gonna go to Proverbs um eleven fourteen. So like I keep saying, write these down. And you 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 go to war with what 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 you believe God has told you to do. If this is for you, who's watching this, this is for you, cool. If it's not, pray. You need to know. Don't be out here just saying stuff and God ain't told you this. Proverbs eleven fourteen. Where no counselor is the people fail, but in the multitude of the counselors there is safety. Was this <coughs> okay? So yeah. <coughs> so basically, when you have no guidance and no one to help you get to these things, you can fail. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. So like, not only did did did, did in the story did the person get God brought them to the specific person that's going to help them reach their next he sought it he kept praying he was like he he said he was praying for years for mentorship and god gave it to him i was praying for years for financial stability and god is going to give it to me this year i know it i know it as i have 93 cents in my bank account right now bro i know it <laughs> i know it and um the thing is he's he's aligning me with people who have money who know what to do with money 
who already have successful businesses and are running them. And I'm like, okay, Lord, what, who I he, with lawyers and tax people and, 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 and all these things he's aligning me with. That's how I know I'm supposed to be doing this. He's putting me with wise counsel. So that way I can get to where I'm supposed to be, bro. All right. You, you pray about that. You ask God to put you where you need to be. So, um, so that way, um, it's not a surprise when you start to see things align up. You know what I'm saying? Like I said, you got to seek God for these things. Don't be out here um, thinking that you're just supposed to just do this because you just have. Nah. If you have a desire, seek after God and let him answer you. First Samuel 2, 2, 2, 7. The Lord maketh poor and the make and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. So God can make you or break you. Simple as that. Depending on where your heart posture is with him. You want to be greedy. You want to be nasty. He can snatch it all from you. And you're probably like, well, all the people that's doing evil in Hollywood, they all cut all the money. That's all they have is money. They're poor. Poor don't mean not having money. Poor mean not having God. <laughs> that's it. That's all you got is money. That's it. Boy, you out here bare naked. Bro, you out here with nothing on. So it's like the Lord is the one that gives you everything. So if he gives you everything, nobody can take it away from you. Satan will try to convince you, oh, ah, you're going to fail. And the thing is how I know another thing I'm supposed to be doing is because Satan be telling me, you're going to fail. This business ain't going to work out. That's how I know it is because you sitting there telling me it's not because all you do is lie. It's opposite day with you. <laughs> it's opposite day with Satan. You ain't going to never be that. Oh, so that means I'm going to be great. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So it's like you got to be you got to be looking forward to these things. You got to be um um. You have to be seeking the Lord because Satan will try to talk you off. Like you ain't nothing. Like you're going to never be nothing. And that's really, he, he really projecting because he's never going to be anything. He hates, he is so afraid and scared for his life right now because it's the end times. He is so scared, which I get. I'd be scared too going against a big guy. But nobody told you to leave heaven. So, um, well, he was kicked out. So I did tell him. But you know what I mean? Like he voluntarily left. So it's like, he going to try to make you feel how he feel. Scared. Confused. Not knowing what's next. I refuse. I am the daughter of the most high God. I have a clear mind. You know what I'm saying? And and I have a sound mind. That's what I mean. And and I know what God has for me. I know who I am. I know what's next. I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Simple as that. And God will give me everything I need. According to his riches and glories. And on top of that. The, uh, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. So not only... Is, is is he going to give me um, the things that I asked for? He's going to um, he's going to answer them not because of who I am, but because of who he is, and because of my obedience. Simple as that. So we're gonna go to three uh, three John one two. Beloved, I wish above all things that thou mayest prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prosper. So it's like. He's not out here wishing bad upon us on our downfall at all. He wants us to prosper. Like he said, we're not supposed to be out here just broke and and and, and paycheck to paycheck and then suffering and not knowing how to get what and meet in. We're not. And if you are, there's either a spirit operating behind that or you are cursing yourself with your words or you're lazy or something. There's, some, there's, a, there's a solution because if something, if you are constantly in lack and you are a Christian, something's wrong there. I'm not saying you're supposed to be buku rich, but you ain't supposed to be down dirt poor either. So something got to be happening. You got to see God about what's going on, what you could possibly be doing wrong, or what spirit is operating or something, because nah, that ain't it. He want us to prosper, period. All right, so we're going to go into the, the last verse. I hope you guys are writing down all of these verses. And if you are listening through um, Spotify or through podcasts, um, go ahead and go to the YouTube channel where I have these verses listed and you can see them visibly and write them down. I'm going to put them in the description as well. Um, last verse is Ecclesiastics. Ecclesiastics is one of them books, boy, like <laughs> that have you rethinking every, everything about life. Like why? You know what I'm saying? But I like Ecclesiastics. It's real. Ecclesiastics is very real. It's like, you know, but um, Ecclesiastics 9 verse 10. Okay. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do with it might. For there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom in the grave, whether thou goest. So, we're not put on this earth 
we're not put on this earth to just like work you know what i'm saying like to just be here just to toil away no we have a purpose and it says whatever you whatever you find to do do it well because when you dead you won't be able to do none of these things you know what i'm saying and and the thing is also make sure it's in the will of god i keep saying that because we do things outside his will all the time and be wondering why stuff go left because we ain't listening because we not listening we're not hearing his voice we saw something that looked fun oh i want to do that and that's cool and all great but did he tell you to so it's like we got to make sure that we on our p's and q's when it come to god bro and so like like i said use all of these verses bro all of these verses on um all of these verses on your on your stuff pray them over your life but right now we're about to jump into what i was talking about what i found with this guy that i'm learning how to drop ship from but i'm also learning the mental aspect of it so these are the things i want to show you right now okay these are the things that he's talking about dreams to reality from his world point of view his worldly point of view he is not a christian okay so that means these things are going to be weird but what i'm going to do is give you the opposite if you're taking notes get out a pen and paper and take notes these are things that god has given to me okay and i want to give them to you guys take notes okay if you're starting a business if you're starting to go after your dreams or anything it may be okay what he got down here is some really great stuff but it's not aligned with God. And I found God giving me specific points that, that that I can align them to God. Okay? So, it says dream to reality. In order to manifest your dreams into reality, you need to align your inner frequency with, the ex with your exact goals. They must be in uh, resonance with each other. Inner frequency, you see what I'm saying? By how it's being worldly. So, what you need to do to manifest, not even manifest, to have your... your um, to have your dreams, to have your big, your deepest things that you want to do in order for them to become reality, you need to align the will of God in your life to your wants, needs, and actions. Okay? Write this stuff down. You need to align them to your wants, needs, and actions. They have to align with the Lord. Okay? They have to. Because if they don't, um, if they don't, then you go, you're going to be out here tripping, bro. You you gonna be out here tripping. Um let me see something. I'm trying to see something. I'm trying to see something. If it'll let me. So that way I can still see me in the corner. Um why is it doing that? Y'all, I'm sorry. I'm trying to figure out how to make sure that this can be in the big screen. It won't let me. It won't let me be great. Um, it's whatever. Anyway, we're going to go back to reading it. Okay, so number one, hold faith that this goal will come to reality and truly believe that you are deserving of success. Manifestation is incredibly powerful. You want to speak of your goals as if you already achieved them. See, like the, the people in the world really be aligned really be speaking biblically and don't even really be knowing it so what he's saying is that um hold faith that this goal will come to true so when you ask god for something basically you scripture says this when you ask god for something believe you already have it because why ask god for something and you don't think you're gonna have it or you think he's gonna play with you mm -hmm, i don't know why that don't make no sense so make sure that you 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 when you pray and you ask god for these things you he already answered it what you need to do is begin to work you know what i'm saying faith without substance is dead so like what are you going to do when you believe he has it so like it's like me just saying this is going to be my best financial year yet and doing nothing about it just saying that what am i doing to make sure that god is opening them doors for me you know so and it says manifestation is incredibly powerful no prayer is powerful we don't manifest nothing i don't speak and it becomes i'm not god okay so what we do is pray and god answers it so prayer is incredibly powerful 
and you want to speak of your goals as if you already achieved them. Like I just said, act like God already answered your prayer. So um, what I put is have faith in God that God will come, that, that the goal will come to reality. Have faith in God that whatever goal it is I'm achieving is going to come to reality, okay? All right. Number two, don't write down what you see. Um, don't don't write down what you see here, bro. Okay? Don't write down that. Write down what I'm saying. Okay? Because these things are, are from a man of, who doesn't know Christ. Okay? So his number two is you must have an exact plan to the finest detail on how you're going to achieve this goal. Okay. And this one is, is, is correct to write it down, make a plan. I think it's, um, what verse is that? Um, let me see if I can find that verse, but, uh, hold on. My fault. Yeah. Um, I can't look for it without the thing, but, um, write it down, make it plain. You and God are going into this business plan. You and God are the ones who are doing this together. It is not you. And then you go to God and about, you know, it's y'all together. It's not separate. Y'all are together. So y'all come together. Okay, God, this is what I feel like you put on my heart to do. So what's the business name? What are we going to do? Have a plan created, write it down, have smart goals. Okay. So smart goals and the acronym for SMART, okay? SMART goals is S, specific goals. Write this stuff down, okay? I'm not just speaking to speak. Write this stuff down. S SMART goals, specific goals. S, specific goals. M, measurable goals. Don't be out here thinking that you about to get the billions tomorrow. That don't make no sense. A, attainable goals, okay? Make sure that you can actually do it. Like I said, don't be out here thinking you get, you get the millions tomorrow, okay? If you were having a store, you wouldn't think you're about to get a million customers tomorrow. You would think, okay, maybe one to ten. You have a measurable, um, have an attainable goal, and it's also measurable. Like, you know what I'm saying? Okay, R, realistic goals. Like I keep saying, don't think you out here about to have a million dollars tomorrow in sales. You're not. Realistic. You might not have a sale tomorrow. You might not have a sale your first week. But. Through these goals and trusting in God, by the end of that week or by maybe the next week or maybe the next day, you could have a sale. It's all in God's timing and it's all in trusting in him and making sure you guys are aligned in this business plan. T, time-oriented goals. Make sure you have goals that you can, you, that you want to hit that are in a specific time. Because if you don't, then you'll just be doing stuff willy-nilly and then, you know, not really achieving what you want to achieve because you haven't really focused on a certain thing or because sometimes we like okay we plan with god and, and we just we sit and we wait okay At, for a long time i wouldn't make i wouldn't have goals because i thought that if i had goals and somehow i was stepping out of the, the 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 plan of god and he was like no you can have goals the point so because with the goals he's i'm seeing the, uh, he's getting the glory because i'm praying and i'm asking and i'm working towards a specific thing and then when he does it i'm like oh snap boom you know what i'm saying so stuff are working out so again smart goals s specific goals m measurable goals a attainable goals r realistic goals t time oriented goals okay all right, these is these are gems that were just given to me literally last week. So I'm I'm literally giving them to y'all right now. Okay, so we're gonna go back to um we're gonna go back to number three. Okay, obsess over this goal every single dang day and let it consume your life. This we are not doing that. We're not doing that. We're not obsessing over anything but the blood of Jesus, the love of Christ. Okay, so what I put is declare and decree over this and plead the blood daily. That's not obsession. OK, I'm not going to be obsessed about nothing, especially when I'm walking with God. I'm not. So what 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 you do is declare it. I will be successful in this business. I will make ten thousand dollars a month in profit. I declare it, and I decree and I plead the blood of Jesus and I seal it in the blood of Jesus in Jesus name. Amen. That's it. And I go about my day. I'm not going to sit here and worry about things I can't control. If God tells me to do something, I do it. If he tells me to scale back on something, I scale back. If 
I'm not about to sit here and obsess. Don't do that. Don't get in your head like, oh, I need to do this. I saw so-and-so do this. It, may, it worked for them. You do what God tell you to do. Even the thing is following God when he tell you to do stuff isn't always logical. On God, it's not. He tell you to do stuff and it don't even be looking right. You be like, what? And then when you do it, you be like, oh, like, <laughs> like just small things. Like the other day, I, want, I wanted to go to Aldi's, bro. I wanted to go to Aldi's. And I forgot at the end of work, I didn't have a quarter. Everybody knows you need a quarter to go to Aldi's to get the basket. And so I was like, Lord, I don't feel like walking around with the with the bag. I just, I don't, I don't you know what I'm saying? And he was like, go to the store. I will provide you a basket. And I was like, okay, cool. So I go to the store and I get out and ain't nobody trying to give me their basket. Like, I'm like, you said you was going to provide me a basket with a basket at. And so like, I go in the store thinking like, I'm going to see, spot somebody. Don't. I walk out the store. I'm like, Lord, that's why I don't want to come. Ain't nobody. Da, 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 da. And I walk out and I look into the parking lot and it's a basket sitting right there waiting for me in front of my car. I was like, <laughs> okay, I heard you. You know what I'm saying? Like, God is so cool. He's so funny, man. Like, you have to, um, you have to like hear the voice of God and, and heed to it because sometimes he tell us stuff and it's not going to always make sense, but we do it anyway. Okay. All right, so number four, we're going to jump into number four, what he say. Let go of any limiting limiting beliefs that you may have and truly believe you are worthy of achieving your goals. And truly believe, yeah. Number four, that's that 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 aligns with God. That aligns with God most definitely. Because sometimes we um sometimes we um number four, yeah. Let go of any limiting beliefs you may have and truly believe you are worthy of achieving your goals. So what I put is know that God has led you to do this. Because I, like I said, Satan is really going to try his best. Satan is really going to try his best to be like, oh, you're not going to be this, that, and the third. You're going to fail. and You're going to do all of this. Tell him to shut up because you literally can't. There's a lot of things God won't tell you to do to people because they are brothers and sisters. They're just creation. But to him, you can dog walk Satan. You can say anything to him. As long as you ain't using his own words against him, you can literally say anything to him. If you don't shut up talking to me, somebody, not somebody speaking to me talking about some failure, somebody who's going to fight God and lose. <laughs> not somebody who fell from heaven trying to talk to me how I ain't going to be nothing. Not somebody who's going to be in hell for all of eternity. Like, you got to dog walk Satan. You got to talk to him like the dog he is. Because he would talk to you about how you ain't this all the live long day. So you got to come for him head for head, period. And you can use scripture. Using scripture is the best way. But sometimes you don't be having it on you right there and there. And you just want to tell him to shut up. And that's what I do. Okay? So, we're going to go back into number five, okay? And this is the crazy amount is that this man came up with seven things and God gave me seven things. So, seven is the number of completion, right? All right, so number five, never succumb to fear, lack, or doubt. This is the worst thing you can possibly do to lower your frequency. Again, this frequency word. I don't know what that means, really. But number one, don't, like I just said, don't let Satan say whatever to you. Don't let him discourage you. And when you don't see the results that you expect to see right away, don't give up. Don't, don't nothing be to fail but a try. So if you claim that you failed at something, you really did. You tried something. You know what I'm saying? And you got to try a different way now. Remember the bottle, the, the cleaning product 409. The reason why it's called 409 because they tried 408 times to come up with a formula to clean something. And 409 was the first thing that worked. They they tried 408 times, bro. So that means you got you to gotta, you gotta keep going. And I'm speaking that to myself because I know it's not going to be easy to start this store to get it up and running, to get my customers to get it successful. It's not going to be easy at all, but it will be worth it because I'm going to keep going with God. So my number five is never let fear, lack of doubt creep in and, and discourage you. That's basically what he said. So it's like the Bible says 365 times. It's a reminder for every day. Do not fear. What do you have to fear? If God is for you, who can be against you? If God right here, Jesus right here, Holy Spirit is in here. What am I afraid of? Nothing. I'm not walking around in fear. I'm not going to walk around like Satan. Satan walks around in fear because he's scared because he got to fight God and he's going to lose. <laughs> Dumb. But anyway, we're going to jump right back into it. Okay, so number six, do 
Don't put any focus on your fear or doubt. Just let those thoughts pass and move on. The less attention you put on these thoughts, the greater your frequency will rise. Positivity is the key. So what I'm saying here is, again, with the frequency, I don't know what that is. I don't know what that is. But frequency, but what I'm talking about is don't let Satan talk to you any kind of way. And and the thing is with that, just let it pass and all that. We don't do that here. As Christians, we pray. We get on our face. If you need to fast, fast. But what we're going to do is break the war. It's, it's going to be warfare because you're trying, number one, I'm breaking a generational curse. Going after wealth. I'm going to go through it. It's going to be warfare. I'm going to have to fast and I'm going to have to be on my face and I'm going to have to go through it. And that's fine. I cho- I know what side I chose. But that's what you don't do is give up. Don't let it run you. If you starting to feel like it's too heavy on you mentally, that means you get on your face and you pray and you get into your heavenly language. The Lord told me that my heavenly language is one of the greatest weapons of warfare that I have. The Bible is great. My regular prayer in English is great. But my heavenly language is one of the greatest because Satan don't know what I'm saying. He can't know. <laughs> it's the Holy Spirit and God going at it. And I love it. Okay. So what I put for number six, uh, seven, um, six is when they when the fear... And the doubt creep in because it will. That's how Satan works. He always come back. Remind them what God said to you. But also get on your face. Get on your face. Get to praying. You got to get to praying. Tell him what. And number one, it also reminds you what God said. God said, I'm going to be successful. God said, I am his daughter. God said, he withholds nothing from me that is good. God said, this is my time. God said, everything new. God said, no more delay. So who are you talking to? You know what I'm saying? Y'all really, y'all really got to, y'all got to come for his head. Like, y'all really got to come for Satan's head. You know what I'm saying? All right. Number seven, last but not least, prayer. And it is ironically, bro. Ironically. He's talking about some prayer. What you just talking about the universe? <laughs> it's so weird. Prayer. Let the universe know what you want of life and it shall manifest. No. Prayer. Let God know what you desire. Tell him, pour everything out. And he will either give it to you or he won't. But make sure that your prayers are in the will of God. Because we pray and we ask amiss and we wonder why we're not getting things. And we pray or we're in sin and we wonder why we're not getting things. It's just like, this is a process, okay? So, that's what he said. This is what I said. Number seven. Pray consistently about being in the will of the Lord. you got to constantly pray. Every decision you make from which label to the name, to the font, to the color, everything you have to ask God about. He gets the glory out of it because when you become a success and someone eventually asks you, how did you do this? You can be like the Lord. Like, no, like, what did you, the Lord, he gave me the font. He gave me the color. He gave me the the, the, the logo. He gave me everything. You know what I'm saying? So it's like specific things um, that, yeah, specific things that you have to ask the Lord for. Pray consistently. Pray without ceasing. Period. Be on your face. Be on your face. The greatest posture in the world is to be on your face before the Lord. Face to the dust. Okay? All right. And we're going to go to these action steps, right? These are uh, these are, uh, these are are things that he said. Um, these are things that he said that you should do. Read these books. Uh, detach from the past and seek counsel. That's to get ready to transform your inner world. That's crazy. I mean, like, what? What? Anyway, so what I'm about to tell you what we about to do, okay? These are my action steps, okay, in Jesus' name. Number one, read the Bible. The Word is your sword. It is your lifeline. If you are not in your Bible, you are starving your Holy Spirit. The Holy, You are starving Him. He hungry. He want to work. He want to eat. You feed you all day. Feed Him, okay? Number two. Let go of your past and let God guide your future. You cannot move forward looking back. You're going to bump into something because you're not looking forward. So look forward. Keep your head up. Don't let Satan try to bring you down. And if he do, you tell him where to go. He is under your feet. He is under your feet. 
under it, stump it. Stump it, I mean put a mud hole in it. Okay? Number three, get ready for God to do something new. Get ready for God to show up and show out and get the glory from by working in partnership with you. Okay? Okay? Okay. All right? So, and um, those are those are the seven things that you need to do. Okay? In order to... Um, in order to 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 get this business or to get this thing or whatever you you you're, you're trying not to you're you're trying to strive for okay here's another thing that he had brought up um that he had um made a list of that I made my own personal list you can make this list however you want um so this is this the, the dopamine detox okay and I recently just started this for myself that I knew that if I wanted to achieve something great, I was going to have to to make to changes to my life because I can't do the same thing, trying to get to, to doing the same thing over expecting different results. That's insanity, right? So I was like, okay, dopamine detox is real. And even though a lot of what I'm doing is going to involve me being on my phone and making sales and stuff like that, that don't mean I got to... I got to be on my phone and my phone is my biggest downfall because I have so much that I could be doing, but I'd be on my phone. I'm never not busy. So with me be on my phone, I could always be doing something else. I can always be prayer. I could be doing homework. I could be doing stuff for my ministry. I could be doing stuff for this, for this business. There's never not something I couldn't be doing. So I had to, I had to, I had to release myself from that. I had to ask God to like, you know, help me help myself. So we're going to go through his list. Okay, we're going to see what he's talking about. All right, so he said, no porn or masturbation. I already don't do those things. No drugs or alcohol. I already don't do those things. No breakfast, intermittent fasting. I fast twice a week. Biblically, I fast twice a week on a Wednesday and a Friday for biblical reasons. No unhealthy or BS foods. I'm already working on my... Um, I'm already working on my, you know, workout, a healthy eating plan. I'm already on that. No mindless in entertainment. Now that I did put, um, maybe on Sundays, I'll watch a, a few YouTube videos, but don't consume anything that's not helping the business, the ministry or anything like that. Work out every single weekday, period. I work out five days a week. If I can, this week was the plan. I worked out four days this week and I was trying to go today, but my body was just too, I was, it was too sore. I couldn't go. I needed a day of rest. Drink a gallon of water a day. I'm trying to get to that point. I really am. Meditate for 10 minutes a day. What we're not going to do is meditate. What we're going to do is we're going to pray. We're going to pray for 10 minutes. We're going to pray in our heavenly language for 10 minutes. Okay. All right. Number nine, journal for 10 minutes a day. Mm, I don't, I journal sometimes. I don't journal all the time, but that time can be spent in prayer or talking to God, spending time with God, read 10 pages a day. I don't know about all that because we got stuff to do. So what I would say is read your Bible, read a couple pages of your Bible. You know, for me, I read a chapter a day. So read a chapter a day, work towards your goal for two hours a day. Now this I'm trying to work on this specific thing. I'm trying to work on because I'm in school. I have a job. So it's like trying to find two hours a day to just focus on that is kind of difficult. But I'm, I'm, I, I've been praying about discipline and consistency with my father. Okay. Eight or nine hours of sleep, bro. Most definitely. I've been trying to get to bed on time. It's 943. Luckily, this is the weekend. This is Friday. So I don't have to get up um, and go to the gym. So I can be in bed by 11, 12 the latest. So I can get my eight or nine. I wake up by um, nine o'clock. Spend 30 minutes outside. It's cold, so I'm not doing that just yet. But I, I mean, well, I could. I could sit in my car and spend time with God. And I sit outside even if I'm in my car. No, music is crazy. No, no, no. We're not doing that because I worship every day of my life. I'm worshiping Father, the Father with the music. So that's you can, you can do no music, but I'm not doing that. I'm just not. I'm worshiping my Father every day. Cold showers is crazy. I'm not doing that either. What do you even, what do I have to do with anything? And minimal phone time. Now this, this, this was my big winner. The minimal phone time was something that um, I felt like that I needed to do. Like I said, I'd be on my phone. So what I did was I listened to just different podcasts, right? And they had a whole episode on how not to be addicted to your phone. 
and I followed what they said. I turned off my notifications for things that did not matter. Um, the only notification I have on my phone were, of course, for text messages, phone calls. Um, my fitness pal, that's, you know, to lock my food that I'm eating for the day. Um, and work and school. Five notifications is going to pop up on my phone. And my group me. I have a group me with my church members and stuff like that. And and, and church friends and stuff like that. So those are the, like the six things that I have notifications on. Period. Everything else is turned off. Um, I, my phone is shut off by 8 o'clock every night. Um, and I have been limiting. Let me, let me see. I've been limiting my phone hours. Like my goal is to literally just be on my phone for the highest six hours. But my goal is to be four. So I started this Sunday. I really started this Sunday, right? So my screen time for this entire week, Sunday, started Sunday. Three hours and 40 minutes was on Sunday. Seven hours was on Monday. I forgot what I was doing Monday, but I, I kind of messed up, right? But for the rest of the week, I've been on my P's and Q's. Tuesdays was four hours, okay? Wednesday was four hours, four and a half hours, okay? Thursday, I was at school, walking around school, trying to learn learn my classes, and stuff like that. So it was six hours. I wasn't that bad. Today was three hours and 40 minutes, okay? I was on my phone three hours and 40 minutes today. So my daily average has been five hours. You know what I'm saying? So <coughs> is it, can you see? I don't know if it's going to, like, focus or not. But that one, that's been my biggest struggle is getting off of my phone. And the fact that I managed to, to, to de- my average to be five hours is crazy because it used to be nine, ten. Eight, nine, ten was my hours. And I knew that I could not be great if I was on my phone on TikTok all day. And turning off my notifications and turning off the badge numbers for it and like re and the thing is not only did I do that, I rearranged my apps. Like I put them into like these little, you know, these little square thingies. So that way I don't even remember where they are all the time. And since I'm not seeing badge numbers, I'm not seeing notifications, I often forget to check those apps. I think the badge numbers and notifications would allow me to check the apps constantly, all the time, for no reason. And when I started when I, when I literally the day I did that, I didn't pick up my phone because I was like, I don't see no notifications. It has literally helped me. So I'm not on it all day. And so, like, I just thank God for, for, for the Just Different Boys for, you know, making that episode. Because that episode really blessed me and it really helped me. And it's helping me make positive and, and, and great decisions towards this business. Because not only do I need to make decisions towards this business to, to like, to actually get the business to be successful. But it starts here and it starts here first. It starts with him and me. We need to be aligned first. And it starts in my mind because Satan go tell me to all types of stuff. So I need to weed out distractions, weed out the other voices, weed out notifications from my phone, turn all that crap off, focus on him. Because when, 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 when I'm not on my phone, I'm in the kitchen or I'm eating or I'm washing. Because I used to just walk around the house with, on TikTok doing all my little tasks, cleaning the bathroom, washing dishes, cooking. When I'm doing all that without my phone in my hand, I hear from God. And not that I don't hear from him, but it's like he's able to talk to me more because my attention isn't diverted. You know what I'm saying? He's able to be like, okay, so do this. You was thinking about this, so do it this way. You know, and it's just been eye opening. And I really thank God for that because it's been it's been amazing. And I can't wait to see what the results are going to yield. So this upcoming week is my week to get balanced with everything. Okay. So. I'm going to start posting on that other TikTok, which would be in the comments below. I'm going to start um, keeping y'all locked in on what I'm doing with the dropshipping because I want to I wanna follow it. Because there's a lot of gurus on TikTok and a lot of gurus on YouTube that will tell you. This is how you become successful. I want to start from the beginning. I want to tell you I'm not successful yet. I have not sold a single thing. I ain't even opened up a store yet. But I want you to follow me through my journey. So that way, when 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 God bring me to where I want to be, He gets the glory, and I get to help other people in Christ. I'm not here for the world. I'm here for my brothers and sisters. I know that some people are called to the world to to minister to them and have their things focused towards them. But I really feel like God has called me to our to my brothers and sisters, to the people who don't know much, who 
we don't have the help. And of course, I'm called to preach the gospel and we'll reach the, the lost. Yes. But what I mean, like, I feel like my main focus from God is my brothers and sisters. I have so many business ventures, so many things I want to do, and they all revolve around. Like, the burden on my heart is discipleship. I can't disciple somebody in the world. They don't even know God. So, my biggest thing is discipleship, and eventually God's going to help align that and get that together and help me start something like that. But for now, we start out with baby steps, okay? So, um, I want to thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you, Lord, for speaking through me because I had no idea what I was going to say or what I was going to talk about. But God is good, you know what I'm saying? He be doing what he be doing. And I just thank you and I appreciate it so much, um, what what God be doing. And um, I just I, I just thank y'all for watching and listening. And, and I hope to God that y'all picked up on these gems. I hope if you watch to the end of this, put a comment below. Put a comment below. You know what I'm saying? If you watch to the end of this, put a comment below. And um, we can, we can keep the conversation going from, from, from that point. But well, thank you guys for listening. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for staying tuned. I thank you, Father, for revealing things to me through me, through to your to your to your children, through my brothers and sisters. And as always, I will see you. You will see me next time. Peace.